Greetings. We start with this question. What is the profession of faith? We see that in the Bible in Hebrews 10.23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. So, the profession of our faith, that's the question. What is that? What is the profession of our faith? Also in Hebrews 3.1. Wherefore, holy brethren, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ. So, so Jesus is the apostle, Jesus is the high priest, Jesus is the center point of our profession or our belief system. Also in Hebrews 4.14, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, he's clearly identifying who we're talking about, let us, the church brethren, hold fast our profession. What profession? Profession. What is all this profession? Great importance is given to holding fast the profession of our faith. Now most of us would say a professional is one who is paid for working at something to earn a living. Okay, that's simple, that's plain, we all understand that. But what about the word profession. In the dictionary, the first definition says the act of taking the vows of a religious community. This goes way back in time, back to the early days of the Christian religion. An act of taking the vows of a religious, religious community. It's saying a profession, we're taking the vows, we are totally committing to this. Now, 2,000 years ago, the Apostle Peter spoke publicly and 3,000 people made a profession of faith. Now, Peter invited believers to profess that Jesus was Messiah and then be baptized. You see it in Acts 2.38. Then Peter said to them, repent, step number one, repent. Let every one of you be baptized in the name or the authority or the power or the responsibility of Jesus that was the name of Jesus from Nazareth and then he said Jesus Christ Christ meant Messiah meaning you now recognize that Jesus this Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified and died this Jesus is the Messiah the Christ so it's in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. There's a great benefit to it, but you must commit, you must profess that Jesus is Messiah, Jesus is Lord. Now, in the name of means by the authority of Jesus, the Messiah. Paul writes this in Romans 10, 9. If you confess or profess, these words are interchangeable and Unfortunately, they get into change and we kind of lose track of them. But he says, he says, if you profess or confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, meaning the Lord, the Lord, the Creator God, the God of the universe, the Son of the Father, is Jesus. The Lord is Jesus. You will be saved. Wow, that was a simple little statement, wasn't it? But you have to fully commit to your Lord and Savior and Master is Jesus, the Creator, the Son of the Father in Heaven, then you will be saved. Okay, Paul said this to Timothy in 1 Timothy 6.12, Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, get a grip on eternal life, whereunto you are called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. So Peter, I mean Paul is saying to Timothy, hey you're doing great, keep the keep going, fight the good fight, hang on to eternal life, right? Because you've already professed in front of many witnesses a good profession, i.e. profession of faith. And many people knew Timothy's life was devoted to serving Jesus. <clears throat> the, thesaur the thesaurus, sometimes it's hard to say, the thesaurus gives us many synonyms 
for the word profess. We don't use profess as much these days as it was used in times gone by. But the synonyms go like this, to declare. So to profess is to declare, to assert, to make known, to state, to announce, to express, to broadcast, to tell. So profess means all of these things. Jesus says that professing faith in Christ makes us acceptable to God the Father. We see that in Matthew 10, 32. Wherefore, whoever confesses, professes me before men. If, if you confess, if you profess Jesus before men, before mankind, before the people you know, him will I, Jesus, also profess, confess, before my Father who is in heaven. So you get a stamp of approval before the greatest being in the universe, Jesus' Father. Our profession of faith includes professing that we serve and belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus magnified professing faith by showing the opposite of professing. Matthew 10, verse 33. But whoever denies me, right? Before he said, if you confess or profess me now, the next verse is, whoever denies me, says, no, no, I don't want Christ to be my Lord and Savior. Desire, denies me before men. Him will I also deny before my Father who is in heaven. The two greatest beings in the universe who created the universe, created mankind, created planet Earth, you know, you get denied before both of them by denying Christ. If we do not profess Christ, <coughs> we are cut off from God. It's as simple as that, and it's all-powerful, and we need to pay close attention to it. So all humans have two choices, profess or deny Jesus is Lord and Messiah and Christ. We've got this here, two choices, to profess or to deny that Jesus is Christ. And most people on the planet today are busy denying Christ is their Lord and Savior. Okay, a profession of faith requires obedience to that faith. And people don't fully understand that obedience is part of the faith. They just say, well, I have faith. No, you have to have obedience to the faith. In Acts 6, verse 7, Then the word of God spread, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests, that's the Sadducees, were obedient to the faith. They heard the words of Jesus, they heard the understanding that comes out of the Old Testament into the New Testament, a whole new ball game with the Holy Spirit working in us, and these many priests were obedient to the faith. God's Jesus Church grew mightily as people became obedient to the faith. Paul's mission in life was to explain that obedience to the faith to all nations in Romans 1.5. <clears throat> Through him we have received grace and apostleship, Paul writing to the Roman church members, for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. So profession requires obedience. And a lot of people say, well, you just give your heart to Jesus. No, give your heart to Jesus, but then be obedient to the faith. Paul taught the Gentiles in Rome to be obedient to the faith. Romans 16, 26. The prophetic, by the prophetic scriptures, has been made known to all nations. This has gone out far and wide according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith. People, people don't like the word obedience. They want to get around it. They just want to have faith. Paul explains what the faith is in Romans 10 verse 8. He says, the word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. And then he explains what he means. That is, the word of faith which we preach. The whole word, faith is just one single word, but the whole system of belief is what Paul was preaching. So if you want to know what you know the faith is, you study what Paul taught, combine that with what Jesus taught, 
And that's the faith. The faith that Jesus taught is made more clear by the words, the doctrines, the teachings that Paul teaches. Profession of faith is learning and doing the words that Jesus spoke. It's that simple. You just have to get your Bible, open it up to the red letter section in most Bibles. is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and a few other places. But read some words of Jesus, learn the words of Jesus, and plan to do the words of Jesus. And that's the profession of faith, and that's being obedient to the faith. John 14, 24. He who does not love me, Jesus speaking, anybody who doesn't love me, says Jesus, does not keep my words. This is how critically important keeping the words of Jesus. Most people say, well, I do keep the words of Jesus, but they don't read them slowly and carefully and see one is John 3, 13. He says, no man is ascended to heaven. They don't keep that as a belief system. They do believe that you do go to heaven when you die. Jesus said, no man has ascended into heaven. It was written down in 95 AD. No man had ascended into heaven in 65 years after his death. What's the missing part? People go into the grave, so says Jesus. We need to always be reading the words of Jesus from the point of view of wanting to practice them in our daily lives. So we need to read and say, Jesus, I need to clearly understand what it is you want me to do, and then I want your help to go out and be doing what you're teaching me to do. The last two verses of Matthew, Matthew 28, are Jesus telling all church members, all those that would follow, all true believers that would follow him, <coughs> the mission of the Jesus Church. These are the last two verses in, <coughs> in the book of Matthew. He says, here it is, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end the chapter of the book of Matthew. Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. What does make disciples? It means make Bible students. Have Bible teachings and get people interested in learning the basics about the faith. <clears throat> Next thing he says is baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So you make students of them until they come to the point of they understand the need to be baptized and make the commitment and profess the faith and make their vows to Jesus Christ and they ask for baptism and you baptize them. But the next verse, verse 20, says now once they're baptized, this is what you must do to help these newly baptized people. Matthew 28, 20 teaching them, after they're baptized, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I will be with you always until the end of the age. Amen. That's the end of the book of Matthew. Okay, teaching them to observe all things, to practice everything I am teaching. There's a load of things in Scripture you take one, you learn it, you practice it, you go on to another one, you learn it, you practice it, you go on to another one, and do the best you can in whatever years you have before, before your death. Okay, then he says, whatever I have commanded you, that's the words of Jesus. People don't know the words of Jesus, they know tradition about Jesus. The profession of faith means studying and practicing the words of Jesus. Paul shows the opposite of true profession, profession of faith in Titus 1.16. He says, they profess to know God. Lots of people profess to know God. This is a verbal pro profession that comes out of their mouth. I'm a Jesus person. I'm a Christian. I'm a this. I'm saved. Whatever it is, they profess with their mouth. It's verbal profession. I know God. But, says Paul to Titus, in works, in what they practice, they deny him. They deny Jesus by not practicing the words of Jesus. He goes on to finish it, being abominable to God, being disobedient to the faith, and disqualified for every good work. So just because you make a verbal profession doesn't mean you have made a profession of faith. It's right deep down to your toenails. So obedient profession of faith is simply knowing and doing the words of Jesus. Jesus says it this way in Matthew 7, 24. Whoever hears these sayings of mine, says Jesus, and does them, 
I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock.